Hello guys, welcome back to Kodami Go. In today's video, we're going to talk about classes. We will see what the classes are and why one should use them. Now, first of all, let's have a look at this very simple program. So I'm creating a bunch of variables. They are of type string and I have a method which has a console, console.log and I am saying that I'm reading the book name which is written by the author name. If I go ahead and run this program, so I got this output. Hi, I am reading my SQL by Kodami Go, which is fine, but there are a number of problems with this approach. The very first problem is that we are defining a bunch of global identifiers. We have two global variables, book name and author, and we have one globally defined method called read. Things are floating around and they are not much organized. And uh, if we are working on a larger scale project, complex project, then we might be using these names maybe elsewhere. Or maybe that uh, you know, we are using some third party library and uh, these names might be used there. So the chances of name collision is very, very high. Let me first modify this a little bit. Now this time let me create an const object. Let's call this book. So this is going to be an object uh, which is going to have the two properties book name and author name and a read method. This read method has a console statement okay, which is very much like uh, the way we did before and now since I have a book object I can type in you know dot and I know that these are the properties and methods supported by this object so I can just like before I can use the read method. Let me run this and this time around we got the exact same output as you can see on my right hand side. This time around our code is a bit more organized. So what we have done is we created an object or a wrapper and we have wrapped these three properties inside a container and this container is this book since this is an object so we use the dot notation we can access its properties this is much better than before because now we have only one global object which is book instead of exposing three global objects but there are a number of problems with this approach as well the first problem is that I can access book name, author name, I can modify them. These two properties are mutable. What if I want to hide them? I want to make sure that these properties are not accessible outside this scope and only the methods of the object can access them. So encapsulation is not here. And what if I want to inherit or I want to reuse some of its methods and books? And one of the biggest problem is that let's say I want to have a another book. So let me copy and paste this and uh, let me modify this object. Now I have modified this. The new book is on Node.js and uh, just like before I have its a uh, read method. Let me call this. It's saying that hi, I am reading Node.js by Kodamigo. So things are working, but you see that we have to repeat ourselves. So all these three properties are being repeated in this object as well right now let's define a class which is going to have the same functionality in typescript we have a class keyword and we have to specify the name of the class you see that the b is capital so it's going to be in pascal case just a convention all the classes must start with the capital letter and then we have to define our class let's have these two property book name and author name just like before type script is yelling at me because i am just declaring i am not initializing the value which is fine so let's define a constructor for this uh, this constructor is going to accept two parameters first is for book name second one is for book author both are of type string and let me slide these values so that it has stopped complaining and we have a read method here and it has a single console log statement very much like before now this is referring to the instance of the class that we will be creating right so this class has two things this class has its state right which is these properties or attributes and this class has its behavior or method right so states is all about what it knows methods or behavior is all about what it does so let's go ahead create some instances of our class book 
that is the benefit that we're going to get that means we can create as many instances as possible and we still can achieve a lot of things like encapsulation abstractions and things like that before and we are not repeating ourselves now we have created one instantiated class with the help of new keyword the constructor of the book class is accepting two arguments so let's call it read method let me run this program we got the exact same output saying hi i am reading mysql by kodami go it's working very much like previous code right but now i can create as i said before as many instances of this class as i want or as needed let's go ahead let's create one more instance objects let's call this real db let's call its method read let's run this so it's saying i'm reading surreal by kodami now you see that we can create as many objects and we can also support you know things like encapsulation so for instance if i want this book name to be private to be specific to this block i mean only its method or constructor has the capability has the power to update the book name whereas these objects cannot access the book name and hence it cannot be modified by them so let's try this out so if i type period or dot you see that i have book author and uh, one method read listed out i don't see the book name anyway we're going to talk a lot about access modifiers in TypeScript in my subsequent videos so stay tuned for that everything is well defined well structured so this class is very much like a blueprint or a template so this class defines how the objects of this class should be created they're supposed to have these two properties and one method right so it's a blueprint it's a template it's an instruction for the compiler that uh, the instance we are creating of this class must have these things these properties are known as instance variables because they are the part of the instance we have just created and remember that we have the read method every object has access to read of a read method but every object does not have its own version of read method the read method is kind of shared in javascript every object has a special property called prototype that basically is a pointer or a reference to another object and since the pointed object is itself an object which has its own prototype which might be pointing to some other object and if we break this prototype chain then we will have to set its prototype property to null so this forms a prototype chain, which is very much like a link list. So these state, uh, these states variables are called instance variables because every object has its unique value to store. That is why, so if I go ahead and print the MySQL and so you'll do, let's see what happens. All right, let me run this program. There are two instances of book clocks. Um, it has book author and book name. It has book name and book author but every object has its own property right that's why this object is different from this object but the read method is shared if you want to know more about prototype chain in javascript then i have a video on this topic i have given the link in the description box below this is all in this video i hope you like this video please don't forget to hit the like button and if you are new please subscribe to our channel kodamigo thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video